Hello everyone. So as a part of the continuation of INI CT revision series, the today's topic for revision will be the medical emergencies. And what will be that medical emergencies? That is, I will be discussing the clinical features of various poisonings and you should identify what exactly is that poisoning and how to treat that poisoning. Now, let me just give you the various clinical scenarios. So these are all the clinical scenarios. The first clinical scenario is, so I'll give you the clinical scenario and you should identify what poisoning is that. The first clinical scenario is a 25 year old individual rushed to accident and emergency presenting with vomiting, hyperventilation, tinnitus and sweating. The blood gas, it shows the presence of the respiratory alkalosis. So what poisoning is this? This is very, very important question. <clears throat> presence of tinnitus, sweating, vomiting and hyperventilation causing respiratory alkalosis. This is very classically seen among the options which has been given to you. It is seen in case of the aspirin poisoning. So in case of aspirin overdose, the patient they present with the hyperventilation causing respiratory alkalosis and later there can be development of the metabolic acidosis as well. Then what is the first line treatment that you will be doing in the aspirin overdose is you need to give multiple doses of oral activated charcoal that will reduce the absorption of the aspirin and the management of the aspirin overdose it is classified according to mild moderate and severe overdose that is depending upon the salicylate concentration like for suppose if the salicylate concentration if it is below 500 milligrams per deciliter in adult or 350 milligrams per liter in children where there is no acidosis you just need to do observation and fluids have to be supplemented only symptomatic support is sufficient you don't require to do a forced alkaline diuresis whereas when the salicylate concentration if it is above 500 milligrams per liter in adult in this case you need to do alkaline diuresis with intravenous sodium bicarbonate and please remember for aspirin overdose forced diuresis is no longer used and if suppose if the salicylate concentration if it is more than 700 milligrams per liter then hemodialysis is indicated so this is about the treatment of aspirin overdose the presentation will be in the form of hyperventilation abg will show respiratory alkalosis the other features include tinnitus and vomiting now let me just give you the second clinical scenario a man says that he is depressed partner has taken an overdose of a drug now she is drowsy and hypotensive with signs of respiratory depression and there is no response to naloxone now what is that particular drug among the options which has been given to you what is that particular drug which will induce drowsiness and along with that respiratory depression and no response to your naloxone actually like we have the opioid that is heroin the heroin overdose after a period of time there can be drowsiness and respiratory depression but with this particular the heroin overdose the development of hypotension is less likely so the answer in this question is the dizepam now if you take this particular dizepam the answer is dizepam and if it is like heroin overdose the patient has to show response to your naloxone there is no response to naloxone means it is not the heroin overdose okay the answer is dizepam now you take the third clinical scenario third clinical scenario is that a 40 year old depressed man is brought to the accident and emergency with dilated pupil blurred vision and seizures on examination he is tachycardic and ecg shows wide qrs complexes right so which particular poisoning is this particular patient suffering with so the individual is having dilated pupil blurred vision seizures tachycardia and the qrs complexes and that too he is a depressed person so what what is the antidepressant among the options which has been given to you 
so he might be on the amitriptyline which is nothing but a tricyclic antidepressant so amitriptyline the answer is c now in case of amitriptyline overdose the individual will have the anticholinergic effect what is that anticholinergic effect that includes dry mouth dilated pupil urinary retention and as well as the tachycardia and in these patients with amitriptyline overdose the presence of arrhythmia it indicates the cardiotoxicity right if there is arrhythmia that indicates the cardiotoxicity and in these arrhythmias caused by your amitriptyline there is no use of anti arrhythmic drugs right there is no use of anti arrhythmic drugs then how do you treat the amitriptyline overdose you have to give sodium bicarbonate right the sodium bicarbonate is indicated to correct any associated acidosis so this is about the presentation of amitriptyline toxicity where the individual will have the features of anticholinergic effect right and you need to give sodium bicarbonate if there is development of acidosis and you take the fourth clinical scenario a 35 year old intravenous drug user presents comatose with pinpoint pupils and the respiratory depression so this is very clear cut pinpoint pupil and respiratory depression and he is an iv drug abuser so where do you have respiratory depression pinpoint pupil you will have that in case of opioid poisoning and that too he is an iv drug abuser so what is the opioid which is given here it is heroin and you take the other drugs like for example you take cocaine right or you take this uh, another drug of abuse that is amphetamine so your cocaine amphetamines and the tricyclic antidepressants they dilate the pupil they don't constrict the pupil heroin is the only drug which will cause the constriction of the pupil and how will you treat this heroin overdose you need to give naloxone naloxone should be given in the heroin overdose now you take the fifth clinical scenario the fifth clinical scenario is a 42 year old man presents with cyanosis and there is also confusion on examination he is noted to have the smell of almonds on his breath so which particular poisoning is it suggestive of cyanosis confusion smell of almonds in his breath please remember it is cyanide toxicity right and what is the antidote of choice for cyanide poisoning the antidote of choice for cyanide poisoning is dicobalt editate and you should give it through intravenous route and we have other antidotes for cyanide poisoning the other antidotes are intravenous hydroxocobalamin or you should give the combination of sodium nitrite followed by sodium thiosulfate so this will be the treatment for cyanide poisoning so this is the identification of the poisoning now i will just give you few more clinical scenarios where you need to identify the poisoning and you need to treat the patient as well now let me give you few more clinical scenarios right we have a 40 year old drowsy woman is brought to accident and emergency with headache and vomiting with flushed cherry pink skin this is very very important cherry pink skin and carboxy hemoglobin is 40% so what is this poisoning suggestive of this poisoning it is suggestive of carbon monoxide poisoning so in case of carbon monoxide poisoning what is the treatment of choice you need to give hyperbaric oxygen so hyperbaric oxygen is correct among the options which has been given to you now let me give you another important clinical scenario and you need to tell the treatment now a 20 year old woman is brought to accident and emergency with confusion sweating and blurred vision after taking some ecstasy what is that ecstasy we don't know she has a rectal temperature of 40.5 degrees centigrade and creatinine kinase is 4000 units per liter 
So now what is the first line treatment among the options which has been given to you? Now if you see the temperature of this individual, it is 40.5 degrees centigrade. So what is the first thing that you need to do in this patient is, you need to reduce the body temperature. So the patient is hyperthermic. So immediately shift the patient to ICU for active cooling and you should give the fluid replacement. And this fluid replacement, it should be given via central line. So the first line treatment that you will be giving in this patient is IV fluids and the active cooling. And you take another important clinical scenario. A 32 year old woman presents six hours after paracetamol overdose. The paracetamol level is above the treatment line. So what is the drug of choice for paracetamol poisoning? Please remember the drug of choice for paracetamol poisoning, it is N-acetylcysteine. Now let me discuss few points about the paracetamol poisoning. See whenever the individual consumes paracetamol, it is converted to a toxic metabolite. What is the toxic metabolite? That is N-acetyl P benzoquinonimine. That is nothing but NAPQI. And this toxic metabolite, it is actually detoxified by or inactivated by glutathione. And what is the problem with this toxic metabolite? This toxic metabolite, it will cause liver cell necrosis. That is the problem with the paracetamol poisoning. Now, this NAPQI, which is coming from your paracetamol, if, it, if this NAPQI is formed from safe doses of paracetamol, in such case that NAPQI, it is inactivated by glutathione there will not be any problem but the problem comes when the individual consumes large doses of the paracetamol and this large doses of paracetamol what it will do is it will reduce the glutathione stores and once it reduces the glutathione stores the individual is prone for toxic effect of NAPQI and this NAPQI will cause the hepatocellular damage and what is the antidote for your paracetamol poisoning? One is your N-acetylcysteine and another important drug is the oral methionine. These two are the antidotes that can be given. And what is the mechanism of action of these drugs? Both of these drugs, please remember, they replenish the depleted glutathione stores. That is the mechanism of action of N-acetylcysteine and oral methionine and you take the next clinical scenario. A seven year old boy presents to the accident and emergency with constricted pupil, sweating and increased salivation after drinking a bottle of in insecticide. So all the clinical features which has been given to you there is suggestive of cholinergic poisoning, right? That is organophosphorus poisoning. So what is the drug of choice in this clinical scenario? That is, you need to give atropine. So what these argonophosphorus compounds do? They inhibit the cholinesterase enzyme and they increase the acetylcholine levels and thereby you will have the features of the cholinergic crisis. So what are all the treatment options? See, if the skin of the individual is contaminated, the skin, had, it has to be completely washed with water and the first line treatment it involves intravenous atropine and the other drug is pralidoxime now what exactly is your pralidoxime pralidoxime it is a cholinesterase activator so once it activates the enzyme cholinesterase there will be increase in the metabolism of acetylcholine so pralidoxime misylate is a second line agent now, the last clinical scenario, a 54 year old painter requires treatment for lead poisoning. What is the drug you will give? So among the options which has been given to you, the one which can be given for lead poisoning is dimercaprol. See, you take this lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is more common when water pipes were made of lead or lead poisoning is also common in certain occupational diseases like lead based paints or in case of the metal workers and multiple system gets affected in lead poisoning 
What are those multiple systems? What will be the features? They can have nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, anemia, constipation and sleep disturbances. And what is the pathog? As such, there is no pathognomic sign. But when you take an x-ray, you have the appearance of dense metaphyseal bands indicating the arrested growth on a radiograph. And these are called as the lead lines. Hmm? These are called as lead lines. And what is the drug of choice? I mean, what are the chelators for the lead? The chelators for the lead are, one is your calcium EDTA and D-penicillamine. These two drugs have been used in treatment of lead poisoning by acting as the chelators. And not only that, the other alternative drug is the dimercaprol. Even this is also used to treat the other types of heavy metal poisoning like arsenic and as well as the mercury. So these are the various clinical scenarios of the today's revision session where I have discussed medical emergencies that is poisoning and as well as its treatments. Thank you very much. See you in the tomorrow's revision series.